Hey everybody, thanks for watching this video. So today I'm headed out to a small community, waterfront community in our area. The customer had asked for a quote on a custom gate a while back, but wanted to get the old automated system operating before we put the new gate in, just to make sure that everything was working, see what needed to be replaced. Uh, so of course I said no problem, we deal with a lot of automated gate systems and uh, thought it was going to be a quick easy job. Turns out this one fought me tooth and nail the entire time basically. So took forever. I kept getting a bunch of feedback from somewhere in the system to the control panel. It wouldn't respond to my uh, commands. It wouldn't let me finish the programming. It was just doing really erratic opening and closing actions. So super frustrating. And then one simple discovery about part of the system basically cleared it all up, got everything figured out, and it is now fully functional, and we're just going to basically clean up. The wiring from the previous install was kind of a mess, and it had some lights added into it and stuff like that. So we're just gonna go clean that up today, but I am gonna show you what the culprit was that caused all of the challenges, and uh, hopefully save you some time in the future, and also, show you a potential weak point in your security and something that you should definitely know about this part of the system. This fire emergency entry key was mounted right here, and we've got two issues. The first one that was causing all the issues with programming is that this has been tampered with. You can see it's turned slightly. Someone's put something in there and was able to turn it far enough to provide feedback to the control panel. The other issue is that this is secured with just two Phillips screws there, and so you've got basically access to the wires or even swap out the key if you really wanted to uh, with just a Phillips head screwdriver which is not great security. So basically what I'm going to need to do is swap out the cylinder for a fresh one and change the screws out for some high security screws. Um, I'll show you what those look like in a second and then um, I would probably mount this in a different spot if it was up to me. I'm not going to be able to move the whole fixture today, but it's just right out there where people can see it. It's definitely a weak point where people can automatically look at it and be like, oh, I shouldn't be mess with that, and it'll probably be able to get this gate open, and uh, that is true. That's exactly what happened. Stopped using the system because it would just incessantly open over and over again and would not close, uh, wouldn't stay closed for any amount of time. That's because this switch is sitting there telling it to open over and over again, which is what someone was intending to happen. So. So I'm going to try and swap this out real quick. These seem to be, here's my new one, seem to be pretty similar cylinders. So I'll see how well that fits in there and get that back on so that the fire department can get in here if they need to. We all live on time we borrow Time our children to us lend Here today, but gone tomorrow Like a spark fly in the wind We all look up to our fathers All our lives if all is right And we are when the day is dark as night And the drums of war are getting louder A sound you never heard before Gonna come to your town, gonna find your corner And we'll soon be knocking on your door Someone pulls an easy trigger 
puts another to the ground in disbelief staring at his fingers through which his blood runs with his life and the drums of war are getting Gonna find your corner And we'll soon be knocking on your door So long buried in the snow Yes, here we are Shining diamonds Burning bridges as we go And the drums are worn Are getting louder A sound you never Okay, so now that we have fixed the broken part of it, which is the key cylinder was busted, I'm going to talk about why this was a problem, why someone might want to get into this. Uh, basically, the gate opener operates with just simple electrical pulses, so when it needs to do something, whatever is sending that pulse, whether it's the remote or the keypad, like this, by the way, these are the security screws that I was talking about. That's what should be, come on, focus. That's what should be on this so that you can't just use a regular old Phillips or a Leatherman or something like that to get into this. But anyway, the computer is not as advanced as you would like to think. Basically, all you have to do is take the wire that's sending voltage from the computer um, out to this key and touch it to the other wire. That's all this does. This switch basically just allows voltage to pass from one to the other and then sends it back to the computer. The computer says, open sesame, and there you go. So all you have to do is get into this, touch these two together, and the gate will open. Uh, the other thing you could do is put something in there and just blunt force it. So these are susceptible to blunt force uh, from the key cylinder side of it, and then also brute force, rather, and then also from tampering with the wiring here. Super simple to get in here. So I would mount this somewhere that is very obscure. You want the firefighters to be able to get to it and know where it is easily, but I wouldn't put it right out here on the front. This is literally the first thing that people see out here. So also replace these with security screws so that a Leatherman or a knife or something like that can't undo that and get in there easily. Okay, so we are all fixed up. I did run into a couple other issues, but the gate is working flawlessly, and I'm about to show you why this fire entrance box is potentially a security problem. Okay, since my cameraman called in sick, I'm just kidding, I don't have a cameraman. Um, I'm gonna have to do this with two hands, and I can't hold the camera. But basically, you can see, I got one Phillips head screw here, one down here, and the face will just pop off and then I'll show you exactly what this does. Okay, so here is the back of that terminal. Just two wires. I don't think it matters which one is connected to which because it basically just allows the electricity to flow through. Apparently I need two hands to take this off. Okay, so I took these caps off and I'm not even going to uh, take these off. I'm just going to arc it with my screwdriver and I'll show you exactly what the problem is. You could just touch the ends here, but all I'm going to do is put my screwdriver on one of those and come on, focus. Here we go. Touch the other one. Oh, look what's happening. Open sesame. So that's the problem. Definitely have to replace those with security screws, but probably 
need to put that somewhere else. Well, thank you guys for watching the video. If it was interesting or educational for you, please like the video. If you do, I'll make you another one. I will see you guys later. That's acceptable.